So in this video, I'm going to go over the Euler equation. And this is going to be aimed at more of the understanding, the understanding side and interpreting the, uh, the Euler equation and the optimum condition. If you want to know how exactly the Euler equation is derived, where it comes from, I have done a video on that. Um, I'll put that link in the description. If you want to get through it a little bit faster, I recommend watching it on two times speed or something, because it's quite a long video. But um, long story short, this is our Euler equation. So the marginal utility of consumption at time t is equal to the rate of time preference, beta, multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate, multiplied by the marginal utility of consumption at time ct plus 1. So this should be, this is a bracket here, it looks kind of like C, this here, but this should be a bracket. So this is our Euler equation. As I said in the video I put in the description, I derived this equation from scratch. So if you watch that, you guys will know exactly where each aspect of this condition comes from. But all this side of the equation is here is 1 plus r units of consumption, of the good. You know, in this case, it's just consumption. I just quickly changed that bracket here so it's a bit easier to see. But one of the first kind of takeaways from this equation um, is that being that these two are equal to each other, this side of the equation is equal to this side of the equation, we can start by saying our consumer is indifferent between these two things, what they get from these two things, they're indifferent between them, hence because, you know, they're equal to each other. And so then, what exactly is the consumer indifferent to? Well, we know what this is here. This is the utility from consuming CT units of the good in time T. So our consumer is indifferent between this, consuming, as I just said, CT units and getting this utility, this marginal utility from that. They are indifferent between that and saving in order to consume one plus R units of consumption in time T plus one, which gives the marginal utility here, U of CT plus one. So our consumers are indifferent between those two things. It's one of the first key takeaways that you guys need to understand and the, the kind of importance of this equation and what it tells us about how consumers are gonna behave and what they're indifferent between. And this is one of the first things. So this is our Euler equation. This is consumption at time t plus one, the future period. And here's consumption at time t. Another kind of important, significant aspect of this equation and what we can kind of take from it is how consumption changes over time. So over our two periods, period one and period two, how consumption changes over time based on how our rate of time preference, beta, changes and how the interest rate changes. So another important thing to remember before we kind of get onto that is the idea of diminishing marginal utility. So what this means is that as CT increases or consumption at any period in T increases, the marginal utility from consumption will decrease. This is what we mean by diminishing marginal utility. So if we were to draw this quickly on a graph very casually, that should be straight, um, and you were to plot CT here and U of CT on the y-axis, that's very messy, um, it would look something like this. As CT increases, the increase in utility from CT starts to decrease. And that's what we mean by diminishing marginal utility. So that's going to be one important thing to remember here. So we can see by looking at this equation that consumption over time, over the two periods, depends on the rate of time preference relative to the interest rate. So let's take this a step further and see how exactly 
this pans out for different values of this area of the equation here. So let's start by saying, let's we'll start by looking at the case where the rate of time preference relative to the real interest rate is greater than one. In this case, it's going to be as a, you know, if this was greater than one, it would mean that this side of the equation, u of ct in period t, would be greater than u of ct plus one because this would be greater than one. So when this is greater than one, what this means is that u of ct of consumption in period one is going to be greater than the marginal utility or u of ct plus one, and, you know, plus one being a second period, due to, you know, just as a simple kind of mathematical rule, if this is greater than one, then it's gonna be that this holds. And as we just looked at the case, this idea of diminishing marginal utility that you guys should be familiar with now. When this is the case, we know that this is going to also be true. Because remember, once consumption goes up, marginal utility goes down. So in this case, because the marginal utility of consumption at time t is greater than the marginal utility of consumption in the future period, in time t plus one, we know that consumption is going to be less in the first period because when it's lower, it increases our marginal utility, just like when it's higher, it decreases our marginal utility. So that's the first kind of thing, way, way of kind of looking at this equation. So when we know that this is greater than one, we know that consumption in the first period is going to be less than consumption in the second period. Now, rather intuitively when our rate of time preference relative to the interest rate is less than one the opposite case holds so just when we looked at the case as when it's greater than one when it's less than one we're just going to have the opposite scenario whereby the marginal utility of consumption in period one is going to be less than the marginal utility of consumption in period t plus one which means that consumption in period t is going to be greater than consumption in period t plus one. So this is just the opposite case. As we know, now you're familiar with the idea of diminishing marginal utility. This should make perfect sense. So when the rate of time preference relative to the interest rate is less than one, we know that consumption in the first period is going to be greater than consumption in the second period. So now we've seen what happens when our rate of time preference relative to the interest rate is greater than one. We've seen what happens when it's less than one. So now logically we're going to look at the case where it's equal to one. And when this is equal to one, you know, just by, by looking at this equation here, we can quite obviously see that the marginal utility of consumption at time t is going to be equal to the marginal utility of consumption at time t plus one. And again, this is obviously going to mean that ct is going to equal ct plus one. So what this means basically is that when our rate of time preference relative to the interest rate is equal to one, we observe perfect consumption smoothing over the two periods, over the first period at time t and the second period in the future at time t plus one. Our consumer perfectly smooths their consumption over those two periods when this is equal to one. So those are kind of the main conclusions we can draw from interpreting this, you know, Euler equation, this two period model and seeing how when we change this, consumption over the two periods change. Those are our main conclusions, and uh, I hope you guys understood everything, and thank you for watching.